More than 200 program hours, 140 scientific sessions. The latest results on cancer research progress are presented at the ESMO 2012 Congress of the European Society for Medical Oncology in Vienna. Over 300 international experts share their knowledge in cancer research, treatment, and patient care with around 16,000 attendees. The Congress also features creative formats. An inspirational and provocative play in three acts address the obstacles to conducting clinical research in the ever-evolving field of oncology. Yesterday's highlights included highly observed late-breaking abstracts on lung cancer, genitourinary tumors, breast cancer, and gynecological cancers. Significant data from first-in-human trials demonstrated promising progress towards the development of new weapons in the fight against cancer. Many of the new cancer treatments being discussed here at this Congress and in most of the big cancer venues are really looking at agents that are targeted towards specific changes in the cancer cell that drive the cancer forward. So molecular targeted therapy is really what you hear about a lot at this Congress. Um, at this meeting, we've heard a lot about new inhibitors of uh, the molecule ALK, which is abnormal in lung cancer. Other sorts of agents that we're hearing about also target uh, um, PI3 kinase as, as an example. Uh, BRAF, MET, MEC inhibitors, uh, all of them have had presentations at this Congress so far. When targeted therapies first came into the clinic, I think there was a lot of hope that these would be much more active, much less toxic than traditional chemotherapy. I think in occasional settings, it has been true that the targeted therapy has really been a home run. Um, but for most solid tumors, these agents have had toxicities, usually skin or GI, um, and they have not been as dramatically effective as we hoped. Some have suggested that simply because we haven't found the right patient subset in which to apply them. Uh, others have suggested that perhaps the targets we've gone after are, are just very difficult targets and it's hard to effectively inhibit them in cancer and spare normal tissues because our normal tissues share many of these same molecules. So I think there has been progress that one can say in some ways with targeted therapy, but there's a lot more work to be done. And I think in some ways we were a little bit naive assuming that this would be uh, a revolution for all cancers to have these therapies available. It's been much more challenging than that. The field has changed in that the cancers that used to be defined simply by histopathology are now being subsetted into groups that are defined by mutations in various targets or amplifications in various molecules. Um, so that patient groupings have become somewhat smaller as we look to match a therapeutic with a patient group. Most of these subsets define who should be treated in that the remainder don't benefit. It doesn't mean that everyone in the subset gains benefit, uh, but the chances of benefit are, are higher. And so that's a little bit the way we are going. So on the one hand, we're looking for the abnormal targets that we can build new treatments for. On the other, in parallel, we're trying to define either in early drug development or even in the lab beforehand, which patient groups are most likely to benefit from this. And the way we design trials may be different depending on how much we know before we go into the clinic. I think that probably the next generation of drugs, if, the, if our chemists can do this, are going to be looking at drugs that are designed specifically to affect the mutated variants of the normal targets that our cells share with cancer. Uh, many of the new drugs have been uh, directed equally to both the mutated and the normal uh, variant of the um, protein. And in those cases, of course, normal tissue toxicity has been limiting very often. So as we get smarter, as the chemists get smarter, I hope we'll be able to see a greater array of new drugs that are targeting actually the mutated type of the protein or the kinase that we're, we're trying to affect in the cancer cell 
sparing normal tissue to a greater extent and being more effective. The limitations to that are going to be the finesse of the chemistry and also our ability to understand which are the mutations that really matter in driving cancer because there are thousands of them. So a lot of work ahead.